Centuries of refinement have given the arms industry the chance to define what does and doesn't work as a weapon. Most of the world's major militaries now use similar weapons because they know what works and what doesn't. If you have weapons for home protection, chances are the weapons you keep at home are similar to your neighbors. Because so many weapons are now standardized, we rarely see anything that breaks from the norm. That's what makes the incredibly rare and unique weapons on this list so special. You won't find them at your local shooting range, and they're not available to buy commercially. So if you like the look of anything you find here, you'll have to persuade a private collector or museum to part with one. If anyone ever tells you that they've seen a Treby chain gun in real life, they are probably lying. Only two of these 54 caliber percussion rifles were ever made. The rifle, with its multiple chambers, designed for rapid fire, could be considered an ancestor of the machine gun. It was manufactured in 1854 in the hope that it would be adopted for use by the British Army. But after extensive testing, the Army considered it to have too many practical flaws, and so they never placed an order. Although the innovative style of the design gives them a striking appearance, they're visibly unwieldy, which probably explains the Army's decision. Ever looked at a pistol and thought, this is good, but it needs more barrels? Then you might want to find yourself a Lafosch hairpin revolver. The twin-shot weapon made in Belgium during the 1800s came with 20 barrels, which alternated between the top and bottom chambers to ensure whoever cocked it could fire quickly and continuously. The revolver has an unusual folding trigger, which was included to keep the bulk and weight of the weapon low. Because of this, the trigger was known to develop faults or jam with repeated use. We suspect that the multiple barrels had more to do with the weight than one tiny trigger, so this was a design flaw. The onset of the second global conflict in 1939 had weapons designers on all sides scrambling to invent new weapons, in the hope of finding something that would give them the upper hand. That led to the idea of Little Joe. It looks a little like a pistol, but it's actually a crossbow, perfect for firing silently and therefore making shots without attracting the attention of the enemy. It didn't see action until after the conflict was over, with design and testing completed in 1942, but the British-American creation was used for a couple of decades once it was available. It was eventually retired because it was too slow, with only five to seven shots per minute being possible because of the complicated reload process. That's no use to anybody in a battlefield situation, and perhaps served as a reminder of the reasons why crossbows were abandoned in favor of guns in the first place. If you know who created this 30-shot revolver, let us know in the comments. It's the only one of its kind we're aware of and was sold for $11,500 at a private auction. With a similar two-barrel construction to the Lafoche pistol we looked at earlier, Experts believe it was probably designed by the same company, but as there are no trade stamps on it and no documentation, it's impossible to say for sure. With so many barrels, it definitely packs a punch, but it's too heavy to be practical. All of the barrels had to be loaded individually, making it a time-consuming operation for its owner. It's likely that this was created as either a prototype or a pet project for somebody but they never bothered to engrave it or give us any other way in which they could be identified. From the same school of thought as the multi-barrel pistol, here's a multi-barrel rifle. There are no less than nine barrels on this Polish flintlock volley gun, meaning it comes with a lot of firepower. It also means a whole lot of weight, meaning that it had to be fixed into position or mounted before it could be fired. Only a giant could carry this in their hands and fire it. While there's no denying that it was effective when used in a combat situation, the impracticality of carrying or moving the weapons meant they were quickly written off by the Polish military in favor of lighter and more portable options. If you're looking for a weapon that's truly one of a kind, how about this all would take on an 1848 Colt Dragoon? It was built by a son who wanted to make an unusual gift for his father, and certainly fits that description. Even though the entire construction is wooden, it's fully operational, although due to the unique design, it can only handle homemade bullets made by the designer. 
The real genius of the design is managing to prevent it from catching fire when the gunpowder sparks. This compact pistol is the work of French designer Charles Bale, who patented it towards the end of the 19th century and believed it would be the next big thing in home defense. The weapon is known as a wallet pistol because of its size, and comes with six barrels. Each time the trigger is pulled, the barrels deploy from the top to bottom, making six shots in short succession possible. Less than 10 of them are still known to exist, meaning they can fetch a price of several thousand dollars when one appears on the market. This isn't a ring, or even a key ring. It's a fully functional weapon. Known as a shooting ring, these weapons were designed by a Scottish priest named Alexander John Forsyth. They use mercury pellets to trigger shots and fire hairpins. The mercury firing system means there's no need for a conventional flint or wheel lock inside the weapon. This is a whole new way of carrying a concealed firearm. Forsyth's company was only active from 1809 to 1819 to manufacture the weapons, and a hundred years later, virtually none of them survived. You'd be unlikely to see this French flintlock éprouvette on a battlefield because it was never intended for use as a combat weapon. In the 19th century, it was impossible to know how powerful a batch of gunpowder was until it was tested, so devices like this one served that purpose. They load in the same way a flintlock would, but push a wheel when they're fired. From the turn of the wheel, it becomes possible to measure the force of the gunpowder. When it isn't being used to test gunpowder, it doubles as a candlestick. We're not sure why anybody thought that was a useful secondary purpose for a firearm, but it makes for an interesting design quirk. The French have a history of producing innovative weapons, and this device known as the Protector is another fine example. Created in the late 19th century, it's a double-action turret revolver which doesn't come with a trigger. Instead, it's fired by squeezing. They're compact weapons designed to fit inside your palm, and so they come with very short 32 caliber rimfire cartridges. They never really spread to America, although at one point the Chicago Firearms Company had a license to reproduce them. This rifle, patented in the USA by Epernitus Bennett and Frederick Haviland in 1838, is another precursor to the machine gun. Imaginatively named the mini-chambered gun, it features 12 rectangle-shaped chambers made of brass, each loaded individually with powder and a ball. Once a round has been fired, the wheel on the underside of the weapon can be revolved, thus bringing the next barrel into the firing line. It never made it beyond the prototype stage, and less than 10 models were ever built. Nobody seems to know for sure what prevented the inventors from taking it further. It looks like it was a practical and powerful weapon, and it's a shame that so few examples of it are left. Here's a piece of history. This is the Borchardt C93 pistol, designed by Hugo Borchardt, and was the very first mass-produced semi-automatic pistol in the world when it was created in 1893. Loosely based on the design of the Maxim toggle bolt, it was mass-produced in Germany, with the belief that the German army would welcome it. But they passed on the design, and so production was halted after around 3,000 were made. The unorthodox design, with its near-vertical grip, proved to be difficult to hold comfortably, and the recoil when the weapon was fired was exceptionally powerful for its size. The first-ever Luger pistol was designed on the Borchardt 93, but made improvements to these aspects. The Apache revolver was the must-have accessory for French mobsters in the early 20th century. It's a Swiss Army knife of a weapon, incorporating a pistol along with other weapons. The weapon's grip can serve as a knuckle duster, and a knife folds out beyond the end of the revolver. Although it could serve many purposes, it wasn't much use as a gun. The absence of a barrel meant the weapon's range was extremely short, and it also lacked a safety catch or trigger guard, meaning it could accidentally go off in its owner's pocket. Because of that, we suspect that it was used more as a status symbol than it ever was as a weapon. Creating this microgun, known as the Brune Latrige, was a labor of love for its French designer Etienne Saint, 
He received a patent for it in 1868, but was only able to produce the first model in 1890. It's a tiny pistol designed for home defense, fired by squeezing the grip, which doubles as a cartridge and is loaded with ammo. It lacked powder and so was ineffective at distances, but its high capacity made it a popular choice for a while in an era when compact guns were very fashionable. As with any squeeze-activated weapon, it came with an inherent risk of accidentally going off in the owner's pocket, so we suspect it was usually kept in a drawer or a safe to prevent accidents from happening. We've already seen a French éprouvette, which measured the force of gunpowder on a wheel. Here's another way of testing a batch from the Belgians. This percussion éprouvette has a V-shaped spring attached to it. Every time you pull the trigger, the spring is compressed, and a slider indicates the strength of the gunpowder. There are numbers etched onto the scale, but it's unclear what scale they indicate. Let us know if you can work it out. The standardization of gunpowder made such devices obsolete, but they're fascinating to look at. In the late 1800s, before the automobile became popular and available on a large scale, the best way to take your weapon from place to place was on a bicycle. Marlin thought they'd come up with a genius idea when they invented this lever-action rifle in 1892, which was specifically designed to fit inside a bicycle frame and therefore travel easily. That meant giving it an extra-long 16-inch barrel, which gives it a distinctive experience. Marlin took out a lot of paid adverts to promote their bicycle rifle, but it was a commercial disaster. According to their own sales records, only 197 of them were ever sold. It turns out that being able to carry their rifle on a bicycle wasn't a major concern among potential customers. They should probably have done a little research about that before they went ahead and started building them. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.